Let's make over this thrift store luggage rack that I found recently at the Goodwill. My name is Cindy, I'm with Reinvented Delaware, and we love to repurpose and upcycle all sorts of home decor and furniture. And today we're going to make over this luggage rack. I was at the Goodwill recently and it was on a Wednesday and it's Senior Citizen Discount on Wednesdays. I'll link that video here. I got this $6.99 luggage rack for a whopping $4.89 after my 30% off discount. I gathered my supplies that included the luggage rack, some upholstery webbing, chalk paint, white lightning, TSP cleaner, if pliers, upholstery tack removers, I mean a paintbrush, all sorts of things. We'll go over all this during the video. I'll also have all the supplies listed down in the description. All you have to do is click the button show more and you'll see the whole list. The first step is to remove that old webbing. It was kind of a decorative. It was out of my style. This is not my look. Plus it was falling apart. So I used my upholstery tack remover to lift up the staples. And then where I needed to, I also used those needle nose pliers to pull those staples out. Those needle nose pliers are very handy because they're spring loaded. And that means you only have to squeeze them. You don't have to do anything to make them open. They open automatically. And that really does save your hands, especially if you arthritis like I do. I'm wondering, have you seen one of these luggage racks when you've been out thrifting? Let me know down in the comments if you bought it or if you left it and how much did you pay for it? Upholstery staples have really sharp points, so make sure that when you're all finished removing all of the staples, you grab your shop vac and get the whole area cleaned up. You don't want to step on these, and if you have kids around, I'm just going to warn you, use extreme caution. You don't want anyone hurt. The next step is to clean the piece. I like to use this T TSP alternative and I mix a little bit in a spray bottle and I spray it on the piece. Then I wipe it off with a blue shop towel that's disposable. This TSP cleaner works so well. The, the grease and grime that come off, it's just amazing. By the way, I wanted to mention also, I did not need to sand this piece. I thought that I would have to go over it with a little bit of a scuff sand with that sanding sponge, but in the end, I didn't need to. The TSP cleaner cleaned it so well and the finish was actually had deteriorated, so I didn't have to worry about any shine. If you are concerned about it, make sure that you go over your piece with a fine grade sandpaper or sanding sponge like I have listed down in the description, and that'll give it a nice tooth for the paint to grab hold of. When you've gone over the whole piece with the cleaner, grab a clean, damp blue shop towel and wipe off all of the residue that might be left from the TSP cleaner. You want to make sure that you remove all the grease and grime and you also want to make sure you remove any residue from the TSP cleaner so that the paint will stick really well. Now we get to paint. I'm going to use Dixie Bell's chalk paint in the color Gravel Road. I love this color, especially because it matches the upholstery weight webbing that I chose to use to replace the outdated ribbon that was on there. You give the paint a good stir, you grab a good paintbrush like this small paintbrush. I love this little brush, especially for small areas like this. The key to painting small areas like these thin legs on this luggage rack is to use only a little bit of paint. You don't want a lot because it will run on the back side of wherever you are painting and you might miss that run and you don't want to do that. So just use small amounts of paint and as you go along just make sure that you don't have any runs anywhere.
This piece is going to take two coats and that's pretty standard. I'm using kind of a dark color over top of a dark finish and two coats is going to cover it just fine. If you choose a lighter color like a white or a neutral color like linen, then you might have to use more than two coats. So just be prepared for that. If you have a sprayer, you could spray a piece like this very easily. I just don't prefer to use a sprayer. There is something in my mind that is so relaxing about holding a paintbrush and just painting a piece while I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast or just some music or even just having it quiet. It's just a nice time to think. In between coats, I like to put my paintbrush in a Ziploc bag and I just wrap it up and then I use my fingers to smooth out all the air. That way I don't have to wash the paintbrush two times. When I'm done the second coat, that's a great time to clean that paintbrush. And I like to use a product called Scrubby Soap. It's a soap product that is melded into a sponge that just makes the paint come off so easily with warm water. It's just so easy to clean your paintbrush this way. When you have all the paint rinsed out of the brush completely, use a paper towel and wrap it around the bristles and then tilt that paintbrush at a slight angle so that all the moisture will run down. You can also use the scrubby soap to clean your hands and it won't hurt your skin. Let's seal this paint the easy way. I have Dixie Bell's spray wax that is just that easy to use. Yep, you spray it on and then you use another soft cloth and you just wipe off the excess. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm spraying all the all of the whole the whole thing. I'm just spraying it all down, making sure I cover all of the surfaces. And then I take that disposable paper towel and I just wipe it back and boom, you're done. Let's change out the straps on that outdated luggage rack. I chose to use this upholstery webbing that you use when you do any upholstery projects and I have lots of them here on my channel. I'll link a playlist down below. Instead of measuring, I decided to just use the old strap and stretch it out across the new material that I'm going to use and just cut it like that. You don't have to have a measuring tape necessarily. If you're more comfortable using a measuring tape, go ahead, but I just didn't see the need for that and I just cut out all three straps of the new webbing in the same length. I have a pneumatic staple gun with a small air compressor that I keep in my craft room. Now, if you don't have one, you can use a manual staple gun that you just do by hand. This is a small project. You don't necessarily have to have a pneumatic staple gun, but if you have one, go ahead and grab that. It just makes it that much faster. And honestly, this is easier for me to do because I don't have the upper body strength to use a manual stapler. This compressor does all the work for me and it just makes it easier. I'll have my staple gun and my compressor linked down in the description. 
I'll be stapling in the holes that were there previously from the other strap, but I wanted to make sure I had this centered. So I found the center mark and that's where I'm going to attach the first piece of webbing. If you haven't used a pneumatic staple gun, this project would be a great starting place for you. And if you want to learn more about using a pneumatic staple gun, be sure to click on the chair upholstery playlist that I have linked down in the description below. I wanted to get as close to the leg of this luggage rack as possible and still have plenty of material to have stapled on to the underside of this luggage rack. So you see me here, I'm stapling as close to the leg as I can get and then I cut around the excess so that it forms around that leg. I thought about covering the raw edge on the underside with this beautiful jute trim and then I decided I didn't think that it was necessary so I just didn't even bother. You can certainly cover up that raw edge with a trim if you prefer. And here is the luggage rack finished. I really love how it turned out. It's going to go in our guest room perfectly. Now, this can be used in a couple of different ways. I have it staged with a tray that I made over. In fact, I will link that blog post. This was an easy thrift store decor piece that I did over on my blog. That makes a really pretty display. But then you can also use it for your guests when they bring their own luggage or if you want to stage it with a vintage suitcase, that's really pretty as well. And the suitcase can be used for storage of linens that you might use for your guests, towels and extra sheets, stuff like that. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead right now and click that like button. It really does help my channel so much. I really do appreciate it. You can click subscribe and join us so you don't miss any of the videos. Again, I'll have all the products linked down below in the description. And I appreciate you watching and I can't wait for our next thrift store makeover. See you next time.